So as I've thought about what assertiveness is, for me I think it's really important to uh, make sort of a clear distinction between assertiveness and aggressiveness. I think sometimes we hear those two words used interchangeably, but they're not. Um, so aggressiveness to me, and just different definitions that, you know, as, I, as I've looked at it and thought about it, um, to me aggressiveness is the misuse of power. Um, so when we use power in a way that um, is violent, whether that violence is verbal, emotional, or physical, to me that's, that sort of encompasses a, a, a tiny portion of what, what aggressiveness um, is about. Now when we look at assertiveness, for me that's about the positive, constructive use of power. Um, it looks, for me, when I think of assertiveness in my own life, that looks like confidence, um, self-assurity, that looks like being able to make tough decisions, taking charge of meetings, projects, uh, managing accounts, different things, um, and I think it's all sort of founded for me, at least, the practice of assertiveness is founded in um, knowing when and how uh, is best to use my voice and also the power that I, that I have in different uh, positions and spaces. That's great. Um, I think that's an excellent definition, and maybe the only thing I would add to it is um, something that you can think about is how do I view myself? And um, am I confident in myself? And do I believe that I deserve X, whatever X may be? And when, when you view yourself in a positive way and you feel <laughs> confident, and that confidence is earned because of you know, the work that you put into, whatever the situation is that you're exercising assertiveness, then that is a very positive way to be assertive and to not be aggressive. Uh, coming from uh, a different point of view, because I didn't grow up speaking English, and so when I was asked by Sister, uh, Sister Springer to give a talk about assertiveness, I had to look in the dictionary and check out what assertive, assertiveness means because that's a big word, you know, and what does assertiveness mean to me? And so I read through some definitions and it talks about being, being uh, a skill of communication, of being calm, uh, being respectful to others, uh, being open to listen, listening to others, and being able to have an open mind and just having that good communication and relationship with others. So to me, uh, and on top of what uh, Sister Plika and also Shemaina said, assertiveness means to me knowing who I am as a person and being confident about who I am and what I stand for, my beliefs, and being able to share it without undermining other people's opinions, being very open to it, and just having that good relationship all around. Okay, practice. I would say <laughs> practice. And um, one of the things, one of the first things you can do is to catch yourself anytime that you start to feel like you're gonna say, um, "I'm sorry, but," and then whatever comes after that. When when you start with an apology, you automatically diminish what you have to say. Um, another thing that sometimes we may do is, um, "This may be a dumb idea, but." So those kinds of introductions when you're going to speak out, um, speak up in, in a group setting or in a meeting with a colleague, that diminishes what you have to say. But there's some, some other things that you can do, um, if I want to try with the group, it'll only take a minute, and it's called SBI, and it stands for Situation, Behavior, and I have to, Impact, that's right, Impact. So, Let's do this for a second. Can I have a volunteer? This is gonna this is gonna help you practice being assertive. Okay, so I need a volunteer. Someone come on up. Raise your hand and see her. Sam, come on up, Sam. Okay. So Sam, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what to do. Okay, so here we go. Sam is going to do something for us. Go ahead, Sam. All right. What do you see? What do you see? Right here. What? He's swimming. He's swimming? Okay, what else? Paddling on a surfboard. Paddling on a surfboard. What else? <laughs> Digging. Okay, so all, all of you are saying things like he's swimming, he's paddling on a surfboard, he's keep going. But there's no water, so how is he swimming? 
He's moving his arms. That's right, I can sit down. I can sit down. So this would be the behavioral part of SBI. So the first thing with SBI, when you're, when you're in a situation you need to talk to somebody about a conflict or you need to give positive feedback or negative feedback, the first thing you want to do is describe the situation. Okay? So that would be very specific. On Thursday, we had a meeting to discuss how to problem solve for the project that we're working on. Okay, so that would be the situation. Very dis descriptive, very specific. There's no judgment words in there. We had a serious meeting that I prepared for, not, not anything like that, just very specific. Thursday meeting to discuss problems, uh, to discuss solutions for the project that we're working on. Now the behavior, what Sam just did, if, so it would go like this. If I were to say, um, during the meeting I was presenting a, a solution and you were on your phone and you were ignoring me. Okay, I just, I just said that Sam was swimming, right? The person can come right back and say, I wasn't ignoring you. I was listening to you. I can listen to you while I'm also looking at my phone. So what the better way, the behavior, is observable data, what you actually observe. While, while I was sharing my idea with you, you were on your phone. And then when I finished, you looked up from your phone and you said, that'll never work. Okay? That's the behavior. That's exactly what happened. There's no, like, I worked really hard on this, which starts to sound kind of manipulative, or you were ignoring me. Instead, it's just the behavior, observable data. Then the impact is, I felt ignored. I felt um, like my contribution wasn't valuable to you, and I, I felt disrespected. And so it's the I statements, not the you. I felt like you were ignoring me, but the I statements, I felt ignored, I felt disrespected, I felt undervalued. When you um, practice that, what that can do is it can create a situation where you can have a really great conversation to seek understanding. The person then that you're discussing this with is not on guard. So this is a great way to practice assertiveness. There, you can do this in a positive way too. Let's say you're giving feedback. I walked into the presentation and you were up there giving your talk and you didn't have any notes and you were making eye contact with people and um, I, I felt glad to be there and I felt proud to know you. Isn't that a great, doesn't that feel good? So much better than going up to someone and saying, hey, great talk. Do you see the difference there? So situation, behavior, impact, S-B-I. And I would like to invite you, the, the question, going back to the question is, how do you become more assertive if you're not naturally assertive? Practice that. And I'd like to invite you, in the next 24 hours, practice S-B-I with somebody. You can do it with a roommate. I walked into the apartment, and the, dish, the dirty dishes were piled in the sink that have been there for a while, and I felt frustrated. Okay, you can practice SBI with um, a friend, with an instructor, maybe you need to go have a conversation with an instructor about a failed quiz exam, or a letter of recommendation. Okay, there's all these different ways, but um, with your spouse, or a loved one, you can practice SBI, and it's really great. The more you practice it, the better. I can tell you from personal experience, um, one time when I had to do this, I felt like I was going to throw up. I was so nervous to go in and talk to this person. And um, it was when I was applying for a, a program, a postgraduate program at uh, Calvary State Sacramento. And I'd been denied admission. And there were all these things that had assured me I'd be admitted. And so I asked to go speak to the director of the program. And I had to practice SBI over and over before when I was so nervous. And um, it's powerful. SBI is very powerful. So I encourage you to practice using it. It's not something that comes naturally for most people. You have to practice it. Uh, that would be my answer for how, one way to become more assertive. Awesome. Thanks, Emily. Um, I think, you know, just to echo that, the number one thing I have sort of written down in my responses is just to say is to practice also. 
And I think one thing that I would add to the SBI is then one of the things I teach in my empowerment self-defense classes I do in the community is very similar, sort of this SBI to state the situation, state the behavior that's happening, and then the impact it's having on you. And then this, the last part of that sort of interaction when I talk about it in that context is then to state what you would like to happen. So you, I, I felt, you know, maybe in this example that Emily gives us, I felt uh, ignored. And then I would like to have a discussion with you about it. You know, and stating then what you would like to happen in that way sort of also gives some clarity and some direction for where to move forwards. Um, but I think sort of key to, to practicing assertiveness is making sure in your communication that you are clear and direct. Think uh, just at least thinking from my own sort of context and cultural background, typically, you know, I will talk around things. It's easier to sort of talk around the problem or talk around the issue. But when we start to look at the importance of being clear and direct, um, it helps take away some of that blaming language um, and helps us sort of get straight to the point. Um, and I think there's a way for you to practice doing, you know, this SBI practice using your voice. Um, and then I think also one thing that really helps um, as far as practicing assertiveness is to take as many opportunities as you can to lead. So whether that's in your classes now, you uh, sign up, you have a group project, take leadership in your group project. If you're in a church setting and you have the opportunity to minister to someone, take charge, take lead of that. You know, whatever spaces that you're in, whether it's home, work, school, at church, if there are opportunities available to you to get involved with different projects or initiatives and to lead out on those, I think a lot of the assertiveness um, sort of practice that I've gotten is through sort of trial and error um, and, and working in, in leadership sort of um, uh, spaces. And so I would also really recommend whenever those spaces open up for you, even if it seems scary or you always feel I'm not comfortable, maybe you don't consider yourself a leader, um, jump on them and try it. Um, I think that real world experience is really also important and, and beneficial for you um, as you're learning to be more assertive. I think that what they said was great and genius. Um, I was just going to add that Growing up, I'm very, very shy and very like passive. I just let people do things and say things to me. And because I was kind of confused about, uh, hey, we, should, we are members of the church, I should be a nice person. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say what I think even though, because it might not be okay for this person. You know, um, I just had that conflict for the longest time. And then I started, feeling, you know, I don't like the feeling of people stepping on me because when you're too nice, they just do whatever they want to do with you and you just get walked over. So I started practicing being assertive and at first I was more aggressive than assertive. I definitely had to practice um, not being aggressive but uh, just getting that balance because some, well, some people would say that being assertive is right in between being aggressive and passivity. So I would say just striking that right balance of knowing what you want, but also being very respectful about it. If you need to go talk to your roommate um, and tell them that, hey, you need to wash the dirty dishes, do the SBI and also think about all the great characteristics of your roommate and how your roommate is cool and awesome and say that in a very respectful way and you know just be very chill about it because one thing about being assertive is being respectful being confident and just also humility so yeah okay. alright so the next question kind of goes along with what Sarah just answered but what would you say the boundaries of assertive, assertive, assertiveness is? Um, so with everything, I want to bring a little bit of a, I always do this, but I'm going to bring a bit of a peace-building lens into this when we talk about boundaries with assertiveness. Um, when I think about assertiveness, assertiveness um, I really think the, the main boundary that we should be sort of concerned with is determining how we're seeing the other person on the other side of that communication. 
Um, at the heart of nonviolent communication um, is our ability to recognize the needs, challenges, hopes, even the imperfections of the person on the other side of that. Um, and I think, you know, we can be assertive and we can just see someone in a way where we are annoyed with them, we're frustrated, you know, we can see, only see the parts of them where they've hurt us and done us wrong. Um, or we can choose to see them, uh, you know, and all the things that make them who they are. And when we're being assertive in this situation, we're being assertive in a way that is responsive to their needs. And also it, um, it gives us the ability to be responsive to what's happening sort of in the room in that situation. Um, you know, I think a lot of it is contextual. So for example, like, let's say, I mean, in this space, it's not, somebody's probably not gonna walk in with a coffee pot on campus, but let's say, you know, this is pretty common in boardrooms and meetings. Um, let's say someone walks in with like a cup of something hot, right? And you know they're opening the door, and someone right over there is standing by the door. And you see, oh, that person's going to bump into the other person. They're going to spill their hot coffee <laughs> onto the that that person that's standing in the way. And so maybe in that situation, you're going to want to speak louder than normal. You're going to want to raise your voice and be assertive. You know, you recognize the needs. No one wants to have something hot spilled on them, and no one wants to spill something. And so by using your voice in a loud way, you sort of help avert a crisis. Um, we think about this outside of a work setting. Um, when a kid runs into the street, <laughs> parents <laughs> typically, you know, or brothers and sisters or guardians, you know, when a kid runs out and, and there's a car coming, um, typically people will channel this sort of very, very sort of very um, loud energy because they recognize they want to protect their child and they want to keep their child safe and they recognize sort of the needs of, the, of that uh, child in the moment. Um, but let's say, for example, you're sitting in a meeting um, and you have an idea and you share an idea and you feel like it's a really good idea, it contributes to sort of what's uh, happening or what you're discussing. And then let's say everyone's kind of like, oh yeah, yeah, and they move on, the conversation continues going. Um, and I'm just going to speak specifically to my context, um, what, what has happened to me a number of times. Um, and let's say like five minutes later in that meeting, um, a man raises sort of that, that idea that you just stated. Um, and everyone else is like, yes, that's an awesome idea, <laughs> awesome idea, and they jump on it um, and acknowledge it and praise it, and that becomes sort of the, the pathway moving forwards. And so in that situation, it's not just sort of um, confined to both genders. I think at times, often our ideas can be overlooked, and then someone else can jump on them. And I think in those spaces where we feel we haven't been listened to or heard, there's a chance for us if we're recognizing, hey, like I, I think that I have more to say on this topic and I want my, my voice to be heard and recognized. I think in those spaces we learn to be assertive and we find a different way of using our voice, right? In that setting we can be assertive. We don't have to shout, we don't have to yell. We can, in those spaces, raise our voice and calmly and like you said, sort of respectfully um, be assertive. And then, you know, I think just one sort of last example I can think of, um, I remember one time when I was sort of kind of oddly, like early on in my career when I was working as a mediator, um, I had to, I was uh, working as a leader of a team and I ended up needing to fire someone. Um, and, you know, they, they were a great person, um, but they just had continued to sort of um, fail on a number of things that they were supposed to be doing for me and also for the organization I was working for. And in that space, you know, to fire someone, I had to be pretty assertive to, to let them know that I was going to be letting them go. Um, but I also really deeply loved this person, had a great relationship with them. And so how I was assertive in that space was really soft. It was really um, loving, really calm, really very quiet and peaceful. And you know, even though I was doing a hard thing, I adapted my assertiveness sort of to the situation and to the needs of that person. And so I think for me, uh, learning the boundaries of the assertiveness is all about reading the situation and also looking deeply at the person on the other side of that communication. Um, there's a lot of great things to think about. <laughs> I, I guess that the question, um, the, the first part of the question was interesting because it was, I feel like I'm too assertive. And sometimes that happens, and I think you, you, may, you may be in a situation where you're like, oh, maybe I like, interjected myself too much. Um, some personality types do this a lot, and they actually don't have a problem with being assertive, it comes naturally. Mm -hmm. While others need to practice being assertive. If, if you think that maybe you're too assertive sometimes, may, I think maybe we're getting too aggr aggressive, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I think some good questions to ask yourself is, did I listen first, then think, and then did I speak? And if you can say, yes, I, I really did listen, I thought, and then I spoke, 
then stop worrying about being too assertive. You probably had a great thing to say. It was probably very valid. And take confidence in what you said. And maybe people didn't respond the way that you hoped that they would. Um, if you know, you know who, those of you in the room know who you are. You tend to talk before you think. You tend to cut people off when they're explaining something. And because you're like, I don't have time for this. I get it. I already get it. And you want to rush it. Stop and listen. You need to listen. Because too often, when we think we're being assertive, we may be actually aggressive. The other day, I visited with someone who I care deeply about. I hadn't seen this person in about a year. The whole time that we were together, he directed the entire conversation. He'd ask me a question, I'd begin to answer it, and he'd cut me off and jump to the next question. And it was um, frustrating to me because I wanted to share something with him. And um, he wasn't able to slow himself down and to listen. And also it was frustrating to me because I was going, I was coming full circle and every question that he interrupted me with was exactly where I was actually headed. So you know who you are, you know? Sometimes you need to practice being assertive and don't beat yourself up. Oftentimes if you wonder if you're too assertive, maybe that's because you're actually not very assertive and you're a thinker and you reflect on that. And if you think, oh, I don't have a problem with being too assertive, <laughs> maybe you do. So, in my culture, I'm Filipino, uh, women are expected to be passive. We should be submissive. And if you're not, you're seen as strong-willed, uh, hard-headed, and you just don't fit into the stereotype of family. And I think for women in general, we, we just have that, that stereotype that if we are too assertive, we're too headstrong, um, it, it's just frowned upon by, by the society which I think it should, shouldn't be. I feel like as women, we should be empowered to, because we know who we are and we know our strengths and we know our weaknesses and we should play by our, our strengths and we should, we should go for what we want. Um, our ideals and our standards, we should never lower that just to allow other people's opinions into our brain. So I feel like some, some of the, uh, the challenge is it's just society looking down on women being being too assertive but believe me uh, there is nothing wrong with being assertive and as women we we can just have just feel empowered that you're not alone and every woman out here is, is just cheering for you to to go for what you want and for what you believe in that's awesome I don't know <laughs> I don't know too much, how much more to add to that that's sort of exactly what I had been thinking along these lines um, I think the, when we talk about sort of what challenges women have, I think it's more what challenges does society have with assertive women, <laughs> um, not so much what challenges women have with assertiveness. Um, I think, you know, in, when I just think about my own sort of experiences and also just my uh, studies at my, in my master's degree about gender and about specifically, we, we looked at um, in some of my courses, uh, gender in the workplace, and, and what happens often um, is uh, when, you know, um, men are exhibiting sort of assertive behaviors, they're looked to as tough or confident or good leaders. And when women exhibit those same assertive behaviors, the same exact ones, whether they're verbal or even sort of the ways they set up meetings and things, um, and studies back this up, what happens is when women are doing those same things, they're, they're seen uh, as bossy or they're seen as um, nosy or they're seen as, you know, um, dramatic, um, as opposed to sort of strong, confident leaders in the same way that, that men are seen doing those same things. And so I think, you know, um, challenges that women may face, it might be hard, you know, when people come from different cultures, different backgrounds, different countries and contexts, and we have all these sort of social and cultural cues on what's okay for a woman to do and what's okay for a man to do. And I think depending on your background and your context, um, especially if, I think most, most societies and most cultures do expect women to be passive and, and submissive, like Sarah said, and I think, you know, if, if you um, 
feel that that's your culture, it might be sort of a journey for you to learn to sort of reclaim your assertiveness and, and connect with the power of your voice and, and sort of your own power in different spaces. Um, but I really think sort of the challenge is more with um, how society perceives assertive women. And just to echo Sarah, um, to all the assertive women out here, all of you have that in you, and um, the more you use it, it'll be a really great sort of asset to you as you're in, in your homes, in your family space, at church, um, and at work, at school, wherever you are, um, assertiveness can be a great, great benefit for you. Okay, the, um, so the question being, what challenges do women have with um, assertiveness? I completely agree. I, see, I saw a lot of heads nodding and in the audience. Um, sometimes I think the reason why we may begin a statement with, um, I'm sorry, but, is because we're worried about that B word. We don't mm -hmm. want to be called bossy. And also, <laughs> you guys can laugh, it's okay. That was meant to be a joke. Um, <laughs> the, the other thing is, the, um, or that, that idea of, um, Oh, this may be a dumb idea, but what if we, right? Maybe you're working a group project or some, something together, you're collaborating. Do you think that Oprah Winfrey ever says, I'm sorry, but, before she states her opinion? Or what about Michelle Obama? I was trying to think of powerful women <laughs> who I admire, who um, speak their minds. I, I love opinionated women. I love women who know their minds and they are assertive, um, especially if they are also good listeners. And that's something that we can do. So we can, we can think about that challenge of not apologizing for our idea or our contribution. It's not a dumb idea. It's a great idea. Let's see how far we can take it. All right, thank you so much for your comments. Um, we have some time left, so um, if, does anyone in the audience have any questions for the panelists? Um, I, I, I'll start. Um, has anyone noticed what I've been doing as I've been sitting up here? Okay. Um, you, you're nodding your head. What have I, what have I been doing? I've seen you fidget your feet a lot. Okay. So fidgeting my feet. I've been going like this and going in between crossing. And fi yeah, fidgeting with the cord. Part of that's passing <laughs> the microphone around, <laughs> being in the middle. Um, but I've also like been fidgeting sitting like this or sitting like this, right? You know, there's interesting, like our body message sends different, or our body language sends different messages. So I send a very different message if I'm like this or if I'm sort of like curled up and twisted <laughs> in a meeting space than if I'm sitting sort of forward like this, right? My, my body, um, along with my voice, um, is an important sort of reflection of how I'm choosing to take up space in a room. Um, and I think, you know, I, at least for me growing up, I was often sort of just taught in different ways to sort of like, like um, hunch myself and, and diminish sort of myself just in how I carried my body posture. So part of what I've been learning as I've been, I'm a young professional, <laughs> some of you probably thought I was a student, <laughs> um, but in, in my sort of young like career, I've been learning sort of like you, I'm glad you brought this question up, the importance of, of my body language in different spaces and what those messages send about not only me, but also about the confidence. You know, I can sit however I want and, and feel the same sense of confidence inside of me, but um, also important is, are the messages that I send with, with my body as well. This is like a really meta experience because we're talking about assertiveness and you see how we're like, every time someone asks a question, women tend to, not all women, but by and large, women tend to be very collaborative and seek to establish rapport. So none of us knew each other before we came tonight. So we just met five minutes before the presentation, right? So I don't really know what Shemina is going to speak on or Sarah. So with each question, we're kind of doing this thing where we, Oh, well, I mean, oh, it's okay, let's go. <laughs> you know, it's very collaborative. So it's, it's really interesting because we're talking about being assertive. And I was thinking about how I keep passing the microphone back here and it, it rests over here in its spot, right? But I've seen panelists plenty of times, and when they're done speaking, the person then will just hold the mic until the next question, and then they'll pass it. Um, yeah, body language is really interesting, and it's hard sometimes to uh, think about 
what am I doing? Also, while I'm speaking, I'm trying to, you know, there's a video camera right there. <laughs> someone's asking questions. You know, maybe they're fidgeting because they have something they want to say. And a lot of this is going on. So, I, for me, it's been practice. And I obviously still have a lot to learn. Maybe you could give me some tips afterwards. Oh, I have lots of tips. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Email them to me and I'll, okay. I'll start working on them. Next question. Um, so my, well, just like you guys had said about the whole culture and society, how like it's really common for women to be viewed as passive. I don't have a passive personality, mm -hmm. um, but my mom, she's amazing, but and she wants me to be the best that I can be, and so sometimes I feel like maybe I am a little bit too aggressive at times, but she always says that I'm like bossy when I talk to people or whenever I'm like mm -hmm. directing things. And so, in that case, how do I, like, not, um, not, like, submit to be passive or anything like that, but how do I make it to where I don't look like I'm bossy, but, like, let them know that I'm not trying to be bossy, that I'm just being assertive and trying to get something done. Does that make sense? I don't know. Makes total sense. Okay. And first of all, I'd like to say, if you're going to travel with anyone, remind me of your name again, I'm sorry. Yeah. Travel with Dallas because you want to travel with a bossy woman because she is going to get you what you need. <laughs> so that is a great trait. Um, I, I, I'm going to pass the microphone over here, but the one thing I would say is just that those questions, did you listen, did you think before you spoke? And probably you do. You're probably a thoughtful person. Don't stop being assertive, that's mm -hmm. for sure. And it, sometimes other people will need you to be their voice. So that's a gift that you've been given, and that goes to all of you in here. You've all been given gifts. Don't shrink from that gift. In fact, Brene Brown has a quote. She says, don't shrink, don't puff up, stand your sacred ground. And I love that because it strikes that balance, right? You can kind of maybe run a mental check, and I've done this before in a situation where maybe I feel like the stakes are kind of high. Am I shrinking? Am I, am I puffing up and maybe being like trying to compensate for my insecurity? Um, I just need to stand my sacred ground. I know what I know, and that's valuable. Oh, yeah. For one thing, I feel like that was you should listen to your mother. Mother knows best. <laughs> but also, I think that um, she's trying to get a point across. I feel like what Sister Plika said is true, don't ever stop being who you are. But at the same time, um, assertiveness also means being open to other people's opinions of you. And so it could be that there is something that you could change, not your assertiveness, but the, your tone of voice, um, maybe the way that you deliver, maybe your sentence structure of how you say something to other people. And also at the same time, Think of how will this person receive my message if I was in this person's situation. Um, I'd also always talk about this to my friend because sometimes we, uh, we would have misunderstanding and I would tell my friend, uh, you know what, you should tell me this. This is the way you should tell me if you want me to do this next time. And so my friend would be like, okay, Sarah, uh, I apologize. Can you please do this? And I'd be like, yes, that's better. So um, maybe... Whoever you're talking to will want a different way of how you approach them with your assertiveness, but definitely don't change that. Just adapt it to the person. Um, just like one thing to add, I mean, echoing all of them, stay assertive. It's really, really awesome that you have that sort of natural trait in your personality. Um, I think one check-in question that I have uh, that, that helps me sort of with this um, is to think, okay, first, like, well, after, if, after I have, like, an assertive interaction with someone, and if I leave feeling a little bit like, oh, I'm not sure how that went, or um, I, I feel a little bit sort of unsure, apart from sort of checking it on, like, did I listen first, right? Um, the next thing I'll check is, okay, well, how, if, if you know, looking back at that situation, um, was I focused on that person's needs? Was my assertiveness um, helpful to them, or did it actually end up um, creating more challenges for them? And if so, what do I need to do to go back and sort of fix it? And so I think that question of am I am I helping or am I adding to challenges is one that helps me sort of 
I feel like I can be assertive and I can also be passive. I have a, a weird personality that's somewhere in the middle depending on whatever situation I'm in. Um, but that question keeps me in check whenever I feel unsure about, about um, how, how I've um, communicated in a certain space. just like a collective sigh. <laughs> um, this happens to me all the time. Actually, at last semester I was at, um, I, like my students had to deal with the sub for a while, because I was at a UN um, summit, uh, UNP summit in Bangkok, and this is something really common, right? Like I can give an idea about a peace building initiative or something we should be doing um, in the field or on the ground for a certain region of the world that I may have some expertise or some experience, um, and then my colleague, my male colleague, um, may you know say a similar thing, and that that's really easily or readily accepted. Um, and I think you know one thing I heard from what you were saying is just this idea of like people. It's, what do you do essentially when people don't listen, um, and how do you sort of respond to that, especially if you consider yourself a feminist or someone who maybe challenges some of the norms that are out there about men and women. Um, and sort of what, what's, what's left for you there and how do you handle that is kind of, kind of what I heard from you. Um, and, you know, for me, I think it's, it's a journey. I feel like I'm still learning how to respond in different situations. Um, I think more than anything, the first thing for me is always um, carrying myself in a way that is respectful of other people um, and recognizing that, like, people have very, very different worldviews than I do and may not have had the same experiences that I've had that lead them to either um, like ignore my voice or that lead them to um, maybe discredit or overlook the things that I say. Um, and so I think recognizing where they're coming from for me is sort of the first step. It helps me like take some space to calm down before I get fired up and, and do something that I would probably regret later. Um, and, and typically when, if it's an individual that I feel like is being really resistant to me and my ideas or things I'm saying, well how I'll try to respond to that is I'll try to build my relationship with them. So if it's in a, in a workspace and it's a coworker of mine, I'll try to find ways, okay, I'll go out, let's go out to lunch. And I'll go out to lunch with that coworker, try to get to know them more, and then try to listen to sort of their perspectives and, and uh, create a space sort of for dialogue. Um, and if I'm in a shorter setting where I'm at, for example, like at the UN summit I was at last semester, where I'm only there for a week and a half, or well, a full week, um, and I don't have much time with the different, um, with the different sort of people there. Then what I try and do is in small ways, whenever there's group breakout sessions, you know, they have um, in Bangkok, tea time is everything. <laughs> so I have tea time two or three times a day. And those times I try to approach the person that I feel um, maybe really is, has been very um, resistant to just whether to me or whatever it is. And in those spaces, I try to find the time to approach them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I found that that's much better, at least communication-wise. Um, for having a dialogue that's not only peaceful but also constructive and leads to sort of this um, uh, gaining of new ideas and new perspectives rather than sort of um, in a big group group setting. Um, and as far as like getting a group of people to li listen to my listen to my words or listen to my ideas, um, I think a big part of that for me has been uh, learning the context that I'm going to be in. So if I know what kind of meeting, if I'm going to go into a business meeting, I'm going to dress a certain way. I'm going to use certain key business words. I'm going to present myself in a way. Um, I'm going to do extra research and prep myself. Um, because I know already going into that space that I have a little bit of, of in some ways, um, some barriers there. 
If I'm going into like a humanitarian on the ground space, I'm going to dress <laughs> a different way, I'm going to act a totally different way, um, and I'm going to make myself as educated as possible about whatever context I'm going into and trying to lead in, if that makes sense. And in doing so, um, I've found that like, it's easier for, my, for people to, I guess, essentially be more receptive to, to whatever it is that I'm saying or trying to accomplish. I think I would add to that is um, in a situation, specific situation, think about who it is that is resisting you mm -hmm. and is it worth your energy? Yeah. You don't want to hustle to try to get someone to approve of you or to like you if their approval isn't going to um, help you in your goals, in your success. Does that make sense? You don't want to give away your power by trying to please someone else who's not willing to listen to you. So think about that. And I really, um, something that Shemina said reminded me of this idea that, um, oh, now I'm forgetting. I should have jotted it down. Um, I can't remember. It'll come back to me. I think... Um, just from your question, Maddie, because I, I feel like men and women were created with their own strengths. Like when men speak, it's more masculine. So a lot of people think, you know, it commands power because of the way uh, they are. And women, they're more soft, more gentle. But in both, there's strength. There really is. And I feel like um, sometimes you don't have to speak to assert your assertiveness. Sometimes you can just be quiet and everyone knows your stand because you're quiet. Um, you don't have to continually be speaking and sharing your opinion because sometimes uh, being quiet also states your, your opinion on the matter. Um, you don't always have to, uh, what do you call it, uh, put your energy into other people if they're, uh, you know, it's not going your way how you'd like it because other people think that, you know, this person is, is better because is more assertive and you're, you're here. Um, sometimes you just don't have to worry about that. Uh, just keep your cool. It's totally fine. Everything's chill. That's just, just my, my opinion on it. You don't have to have an opinion all the time. And sometimes it's better to be quiet and get that that and save that relationship it's not being passive being passive is just letting anything happen but it, just in my opinion um, uh, as long as you don't have like a, uh, a, a strong um, oppose opposing uh, attitude or um, opinion about that person or about something then you don't really have to say anything we just let other people say what they say and just make your, your, your stand when it's most needed. That's just what I think. I just have like one, one thing to add um, to, the, to that a little bit is that, um, you know, I think it's really important uh, for us when we look at sort of how we're, how we're raised. Um, and I think in many contexts and societies, women are raised to feel that they need to please other people. Um, and that it's part of your job is to be liked by others. And, and when we're not liked, it's um, easy for us to shrink or feel like we shouldn't participate or we shouldn't, you know, um, use our voices and take up space and just, you know, a, a heads up. <laughs> I mean, for everyone in the room as well, you're not always going to be liked. You're not always going to have the right thing to say in the moment. Um, and that's okay. I think part of uh, assertiveness is learning to be okay with uh, um, not having everyone like you. And that's a hard thing to sort of recon like reconcile, I think. Um, but as long as you're acting in a way that's sort of founded in love and um, sort of true to yourself also and true to what, true to what you believe, um, it's okay to, and it's a process of learning to let go of that need to be, to be liked in every situation or in every context. Um, and you wanted to add? I remembered. <laughs> okay, so if you're in that situation, that's that professional situation, and, um, and like I said, don't hustle to please someone if it's, if it's not to your benefit. Like, don't give away your power in that way. But if it is someone that you need to have a, a positive working relationship with, practice the SBI. That's the perfect time to do situation, behavior, impact. 
We were talking at the board meeting on Monday about such and such. This happened. The behavior was this, and I felt this way about it. Sometimes it's not that the person doesn't like you. It's just we have two totally different personalities who are colleagues working together. So practice SBI, and it's really great. I just want to add, when we're done, I have little SBI handouts. <laughs> They're from the Center for Creative Leadership. So it's a, that's a great thing. And another thing I was going to say, and I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Maddie. Maddie, Maddie and anyone else who's interested in this, when people don't listen and, and you're like trying all the things that you thought you heard people say that you should do to get people to listen, you can check out an author. Her name is Deborah Tannen. T-A-N-N-E-N, -E and she is excellent. She's a linguist, and she talks a lot about how words are important, language is important, and especially communication between genders and different personality types, and that would be a great resource for you.